Good afternoon, and welcome to the TED Talks. I'm Ralph Josephowitz, and I'm a professor of neurology at the University of Rochester, but I also finished uh, eight years as a director of the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, and I have served on many academy committees, including the uh, Education Committee, which I chaired many years ago. And recently, I was appointed chair of a new committee that will be producing this uh, MOC product for all neurologists. So my topic today is how can the AAN help me prepare for the ABPN MOC examination? So some disclaimers. First of all, very important, the American Academy of Neurology is not the American Board of Psychiatry and, and Neurology. The ABPN is a certifying board that is a member of the American Board of Medical Specialties. The ABMS is an umbrella association that includes 26 member boards, including boards such as the American Board of Internal Medicine, the American Board of uh, Ophthalmology, et cetera. The ABMS sets policies for certification, and certification is the process where physicians who are trained in a spe specialty fulfill certain criteria, and if they pass those criteria, including an examination, they are deemed as being certified in the specialty. So the American Academy of Neurology has absolutely nothing to do with the requirements for certification. This comes from the ABMS and the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. All of you remember in the old days that in order to become certified in a specialty, all you did was complete a, an accredited residency program and sit for an examination that in the old days included a written and oral examination, and if you passed that, you were certified for life. The question is, as you get older, brain cells degenerate, and there is no guarantee that your brain, 40 years after certification, is as smart as it was when you finished your residency training. So that is why lifetime certification has gone away, and life limited, time limited certificates were issued. And the initial change was to make the certificates 10 years, and all you would have to do is to take an examination every 10 years. But this could result in a period of cramming and basically forgetting in within those 10 years how to practice medicine. So a process of continuous certification came to play. Also, the American Board of Medical Specialties said being certified is more than just having the knowledge base. You also have to continue to maintain your knowledge, you have to do self-assessments, and very importantly, to evaluate your practice patterns. So the American Board of Medical Specialties came up with the maintenance of certification program about 10 years ago or so, and all of the ABMS member boards, including the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, must participate in this. And the reason they must do it is because if they don't participate in it, they would lose the ABMS seal of approval, which means that our certification certificates would mean very little. And why are they doing this? Who pays us? It's the government, it's the third party payers, and it's the public. And we basically have to listen to the people who pay us, and they want physicians to be certified. So the four components of maintenance of certification include professionalism, CME and self-assessment, a cognitive examination and performance in practice. And this is what all physicians who have been initially certified must maintain. So this only applies to those of us who have completed residency training, passed the initial examination, and have to maintain. Now, the, any, if any of you have lifetime certification, this is voluntary. There's no way that the ABPN could basically deny lifetime certificate holders their lifetime certificate. It is not legally defensible. However, within 50 years, all of the lifetime certificate holders will be dead, so this will be a moot point. But going forward, everyone has to maintain the certification. Professionalism, according to the ABPN, is evaluated by maintaining a full and unrestricted license to practice medicine in any state or territory of the United States. This has always been an aspect of ABPN certification, this is nothing new. And the reason licensure 
is a reflection of professionalism is because the state medical boards have the wherewithal to be able to uh, evaluate and see if there's any breaches of professionalism. Two is CME and self-assessment, and this is not new. All of us know to maintain licenses in our states, we have to document completion of a certain number of CME credits, so this is old as well. Self-assessment basically means that we assess our knowledge and then we figure out what we need to learn. And there are many ways to accomplish self-assessment, and a very popular way is to do the self-assessment examinations that the AAN has available. And as you know, all of these products are free to all members of the academy. There are other ways to do self-assessment as well, and this is on the ABPN website. Third is the cognitive examination, or commonly known as the recertification examination, and this is an exam that's taken every 10 years, and it currently includes 220 multiple choice questions. I used to chair that committee at the ABPN, so I do know what the content is. The whole content outline is public knowledge on the ABPN web, and also it is a very clinically oriented examination. This is not the initial certification examination with basic science. This is an examination for neurologists in practice that stresses clinical vignettes, and it is very well constructed. Oh, no, this is a closed examination. So uh, this is the examination that the ABPN puts out. This is the recertification examination that has to be taken every 10 years by any certified neurologist, and it's, a, it's uh, given at Pearson View Centers, and it's 220 multiple choice questions. The content outline is available on the web, but not the actual examination itself. And part four is performance and practice, and this was the part of maintenance of certification that was mo the most controversial. When this initially came out, this included both a clinical module and a feedback module. And the clinical module uh, by the ABPN was to evaluate five of your patients that you're currently treating in a disease category that you treat to apply evidence-based guidelines and to see basically how you perform in light of the guidelines and then to remediate any deficiencies by reading, and then to reevaluate within two years with five additional patients. And the American Academy of Neurology has produced these performance improvement modules that facilitate one's ability to do this. The feedback module is obtaining feedback from either your peers, or from your patients, or from students, or from anyone else. And uh, there's a very easy to complete form that's available on the ABPN website. Just recently, within the past several months, the ABPN determined that you could either do a clinical module or a feedback module. So this really simplified the process. And please go to the ABPN website to read the information to figure this out. If you work in a hospital setting with medical students, you automatically get feedback or resident feedback, and this counts. So there's no need to create extra work for yourself. Most of this you do already. Um, if you work at an academic medical center, you should be receiving um, quarterly or you know, yearly feedback from your department, from the resident feedback or from the medical student feedback. Through, through your chair, uh, and many uh, medical centers use the MedHub system or these automated systems, and you would have access to that, and you could go right in and basically view all the evaluations that you received from your residents or medical students with whom you work. Yeah, if you work in a community hospital, uh, m most hospitals do the Prescani surveys, and, and you get feedback that way, and you could access that information. Also, other major medical centers have quality improvement products. So please check the ABPN website, and there is a whole menu of options to do this quality, uh, 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 this performance in practice. So it's really quite simple. And the ABPN doesn't need for you to give them the specific data. You just attest to it, and 5% of everyone is audited but it's not audited like show me the evaluations, it's provide information about how you obtain the information when you obtain the information. So this is confidential information that you keep and the ABPN does not look at, but nonetheless, 
it's like the income taxes. We all do our income taxes, but a certain number of us uh, gets audited. No, uh, these cycles, this is all in a three-year cycle for the ABPM. Specifically, um, every three years, you have to document 90 CME credits. And of those 90 CME credits, 24 have to be self-assessment credits. And you have to do one uh, performance improvement module. And so you, every three years, you have to document this. And the ABPM now has a uh, continuous certification process where you register every single year with the ABPN, pay a certain fee, and I think it's about $175, if I'm not mistaken, and every three years you document completion of this on the website. And then in 10 years, since you've paid $175 a year for 10 years, the recertification examination is free. So rather than paying $1,500 every 10 years to take an exam, you basically paid for the exam in yearly installments. And the reason for this is not to make the ABPN rich, but it's to ensure that you register and let them know what your address is, because what happens, people move, and then 10 years later, all of a sudden, the ABPN can't get a hold of you, and then all of a sudden, your certification lapses, and it's because no one informed the ABPN that you moved. So by doing this, it's like your license. You basically have to register every couple of years with your license or every year. So anyway, what is the AAN doing to help specifically with that multiple choice exam? Because that multiple choice examination makes people nervous. I actually took it myself because when I was a board director, even though I have lifetime certification, we all have to participate in MOC. And it's actually a very straightforward examination and the pass rate is about 99%. Now you'll say, that's ridiculous. Why is everyone passing? Well, think about it. The rate limiting step for certification in neurology is the initial certification examination. The first time pass rate for the ABPN certification exam is about 85%. So people who pass that exam are basically pretty smart and they have a very high chance for passing subsequent exams. The best predictor of how you do on standardized exams is how you do on standardized exams. Secondly, most individuals taking this recertification examination are within 10 years out of training. And thirdly, people study. Even smart people study. God forbid you fail. The embarrassment is incredible. So people actually study for it and they're pretty smart to begin with and the ABPN doesn't want to fail individuals. The problem with the American Board of Internal Medicine was they were failing about 15 to 20 percent of individuals who were in practice for 10 years. And that's wrong. So the ABPN has done a much better job. So anyway, since individuals are generally quite nervous about taking multiple choice exams, uh, the AAN has asked me to form a committee to form a product for all of you to make it easy to study for this exam. And this is uh, how this uh, product will work. It will be an online product that will include a syllabus that is pithy and well-written, covering 14 topic areas, such as headache, neuromuscular diseases. Each topic area will be about five to seven pages, and there will be an annotated bibliography with about 10 key articles. So that's the first aspect. This will be available either online or as a PDF that you could download and print. Secondly, there will be audio interviews with all of the authors. So I selected a cracker, crackerjack team, right? Not a crackpot team. A crackerjack team of five individuals uh, who I know are excellent writers and speakers. And I will interview each of them for about 10 minutes per topic. And this will be similar to a podcast. And you could listen to each of the 14 topics individually or download the whole product, put it on your iPhone or iPad or iPod or whatever and listen to, to it in your car. And this will be structured interviews where the authors will basically speak about the syllabus. And thirdly, there will be a 100 multiple choice question examination that will be available 
online on the AAN website, and each question, when you answer it, you will get uh, Im immediate feedback that will explain to you, first of all, did you get the question right, and secondly, if you received, uh, got it wrong, why you got it wrong, and why the right answer is right, and why the wrong options are wrong. And then you will get a comparison of how you did with your peers. And these questions will be clinical questions and based on the content outline of the ABPN examination. So to summarize, there will be three components. The first will be a very well-written, pithy syllabus that you could print or read online. Secondly, there will be audio interviews with the five authors for each of the topics that you could listen to. And the whole audio product will be about two hours or so in length. And thirdly, there will be a 100 multiple choice question examination with about five to seven questions per topic that will be taken online with critiques. And what are the content areas? These are the main areas that are covered on the ABPN exam. Headache and pain disorders, epilepsy and episodic disorders, sleep disorders, developmental and congenital disorders, vascular disorders, neuromuscular disorders, movement disorders, demyelinating and immunologic disorders, neuroinfectious diseases, brain and spine trauma, neuroophthalmologic and neurootologic disorders, toxic metabolic and nutritional diseases, neurooncology and paraneoplastic disorders, and behavioral neurology and neurocognitive disorders. So these are the major areas that are covered on the ABPN uh, cognitive examination, and they will be covered in the syllabus, in the audio clips, and also in the multiple choice question examination. Thank you.